it's Andrea. Hope you're all alright and reading loads. I'm going to do a tag today. Um, I was tagged um, in this for, by the ebook reader. Now they, they um, sorry, the ebook adventures. Now they are not a YouTube channel, they are a written blog, but I will leave a link to their blog below. Um, so this is the worst book sins tag. So I'm going to do this one. It's just a seven or eight questions, eight questions on book sins. So the first question is, how many books do you own that if you're truly being honest, you know you will never read or finish? I want to say none, but that would be a lie. Um, I can't honestly say that there are some that I wouldn't read, but I know there is at least one I wouldn't finish, and I'm going to get that because it's down here. And it is a bit of a chunker, I'm not going to lie, but it's not the size that bothered me, it's actually the subject matter. Um, so I never finished reading this. I'll admit this, I've still got it because it's part of my Marilyn collection and it's Joyce Carol Oates' book, Blonde. Now, as you know, I've actually still got the marker in it. This is from a, a, temp, a bookshop I used to go in that no longer exists, so it tells you how long ago it was. I left this town 10 years ago. And I got as far as page 587 and gave up on it. So I did read the majority of it, but, and I'm actually going to take that out because I know I'm never going to read this book because it's an awful book. Um, I've got nothing against Joyce Carol Oates' writing style. I just don't agree with where she took the subject matter because, again, you take a real life character and or a real-life person like Marilyn Monroe and write a novel about some about them, novelise their life, you have a responsibility to at least tell the majority of the truth. This book has no truth in it, hardly, at all. I mean, it's, it's that bad. There are so many terrible things that Joyce has accused Marilyn of that it is a horrible book for anybody who has actually studied her and her life and what she wanted from her life and her legacy it's just awful it's awful it is I mean it says it, it, she explores, explores the inner life of the woman destined to become the most compelling legend with astonishing and often disturbing portraits of the powerful men in her life so it's not only Marilyn that she slanders, she slanders Kennedy, she slanders Arthur Miller, she slanders, slanders Joe DiMaggio. Okay, they don't, uh, they're not called by those names. They're called like the president and the ex-athlete and the playwright. But we all know who they are because they were real people. And they deserve better than this absolute tripe. Which is what it is. And that's what I think of that book. I'll never finish it. I'll keep it only because it's part of my collection. Have you ever borrowed a book from a friend and never given it back? Yes. I once went out with a chap who lent me some, or gave me some of his uh, books. They were actually belonged to his mum and um, I had them in my car boot for ages trying to give them back to him and he never took them and in the end I thought sod this and then he left work where we worked together and I haven't seen him since we were going out for a while we're not going out anymore obviously and so no I've never given back I've given away to the charity shop so tough have you ever pretended to read a book you haven't read I think we all have at some point I wouldn't be able to remember one particularly because I don't bother with that anymore because I've read so many books. If somebody says, have you read this? And I go, no, but it, should I read it? Do you think it's good? I, I would rather be honest and say, well, I haven't read it, but if you think it's worth my while picking it up, I will pick it up. But in the past, absolutely. Have you ever preferred the TV or film adaptation of a book to the book? Yes. The Lovely Bones. I loved the Lovely Bones film. I thought it was very, very brilliantly done. I really enjoyed it. I read the original book by Alice Bold and I just, there was a lot in there that it was just fluff and filler that I just preferred the film. It doesn't happen very often, but I did prefer the film to the book on that occasion. Normally it's the other way around, but on that occasion, yes. 
Have you ever judged a book by its cover? Yes, absolutely. Haven't we all? We all like pretty books. They look nice on our shelves. Doesn't mean to say that ugly books aren't good. It just means we're less likely to pick them up. One case in point is I really want to read the Dodie Smith book I captured the castle, but the only copy I can find has got a really boring cover and I refuse to pick it up. And that's really sad because I really want to read the book. So yes, I have, obviously. Have you ever read a book that you later realised to be problematic? Haven't we all? There are a lot of problematic books out there. If you pick up an old book like To Kill a Mockingbird or the, oh, what was it called? On the Road by Jack Kerouac. It's problematic because of when it's set and when it's begin. Modern books, I would say, one I read this year, um, The Holocaust by Lawrence Reese, which is actually a non-fiction book. It's a little bit problematic in the sense that he says that they didn't set out to exterminate four million Jews. No, I think they actually set out to exterminate all the Jews. Um, but he says no, that evolved over time. I think that's problematic because it, this is this verges on denying that it happened. Obviously, it did happen. We know it happened. Um, but to deny that Hitler didn't intend to exterminate the Jews from day one, some way or another, is scary. And it was just that they needed to find the most... Oh, I was trying to think of the word... Um, efficient way of doing it that took the time. So yes, I think it's very problematic to deny that Hitler from day one hated the Jews for stupid reasons. And they are stupid reasons. Have you ever written or underlined text in a book? Yes, and I'm going to stop here while I get one to show you. I've underlined or written in. Well as you know I do a lot of acting. So scripts, here are two of them. Bugsy Malone which I did years and years ago is highlighted and underlined and you can still see the, the yellow. It also has been signed by all the cast on the inside. And this was back in the early 90s we did. <laughs> to Marilyn from Alice because they used to call me Marilyn. Maz, good luck in the future. Hope all your dreams come true to Maz. Good luck with the show and the man of your dreams. <laughs> Not mentioning any names. We won't go into that. I just... Yeah. I had a t thing for tall, thin... people. Musicians. Yeah, never mind. And, of course, this last year I was in Weird Sisters by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Briggs. And, of course, it's been highlighted and notes in it as well. So yes, of course I write in, in certain books. I don't write in my Marilyn books or my general fiction. I might use a post-it note and tab it, but even then I, I don't. I just tend to put bits, bits of paper in where I know that there's something I want to remember, but not write in them. Only, only a script if I'm appearing in the play or I'm working backstage on it. Now, are your books all bought from independent bookshops? Or do you buy them from the devil Amazon? I would love to say that they were a book from independent bookshops, but there aren't any in my area. In fact, there is a second-hand bookshop in Newport that I do for quite a lot, and we have the natural chain of Waterstones. There is no independent in Newport. There are independent bookshops in Cardiff that I do use, like Octavo Books. Love them. They're independent. They're on Baxton Press. Um, but generally, I do order a lot of books online. I do use Amazon. I use the Book Depository. I use the Book People. Um, I use eBay, uh, so no, um, I use, I buy books from whatever source I can get them from. It doesn't have to necessarily be the cheapest one, for, for instance, I bought the new Terry Goodkind one from Waterstones. I bought five books in Octavo's books when I went, because, oh my god, what a great independent bookshop, I love. So, I use whatever I can to get my books. I, I do use Amazon a lot. I do. It's, I mean, it's terrible to say. It's convenient and it is cheap. Um, I would prefer to use independent bookshops, but there's just not nothing in the area. If I'm in London, 
I will use, I will buy, or you know, I'm going to London later in the month, I will be buying books. There will be places from, books from Persephone's and Foils, I probably will go in on Waterstones, but there will be the independent bookshops that I will be using as well. So I buy books from, yeah, wherever. I, I, I just need them. They're just mine. So that is the Worst Sins tag. I'm going to tag... I'm not going to tag... Oh, who should I tag? I'm going to tag the Book Brood because I love the Book Brood. So I will leave their link below to their channel and a note to pull them so that they know I've tagged them. And I'm also going to tag... Ooh. The Big Haired Bookworm because we love her. So there we go. And again, I'll leave both those channels down below and a link to the ebook readers blog. I'll see you all soon, booktube. Bye.